Okay, got another Deneb video for you today. Surprise, surprise. I'm still geeking out about this awesome tool because uh, it just makes it real easy to build really whatever visual you need, be a real simple one or a complex one. Um, and while it is fairly easy to learn how to use uh, Deneb and how to code, you know, low code visuals with Vega Lite, it's even easier to modify one that you find, right? So the more this is used and the more we share templates or code, um, the more we're going to raise everybody's game um, in the visualization space uh, in Power BI. So today I want to just walk through an example. We're not going to build a, a visual from scratch. We're going to take a more advanced visual online and modify it. Um, and so I'll, I'll go through these, uh, these points uh, throughout. Um, again, if you're learning from these videos and want to stay up to date on the latest ones, uh, please follow me on Twitter or subscribe to, to this YouTube channel. All right, so the video we're going to modify today is this one here, and it's just one of the examples. And again, there's lots of others out there that individuals have posted at different places. This one happens to be one of the example ones, but I thought it was is pretty cool. And it has some really neat functionality. So this is just a simple line chart that shows stock prices as a function of time. Uh, and it has this nice feature where wherever you hover over, um, it, it, the red line moves with it, and it shows you the, the date of the month and year that you're hovered over, but it also dynamically calculates the, the relative change in the stock price for that um, ticker for that day. And so this is some really powerful stuff that it's doing this in visual calculation and it's accepting the, the mouse position as, as the input here. So this is pretty powerful. And so you may want to reproduce a chart like this in your Power BI report. And you know, if you scroll down below, the code that you need to adapt is, is found below. And I'm not going to go through the full build on this, but I'm just going to quickly run through what's going on here. So as you need a basic understanding of what's going on so that you can modify it. Um, so the, the first thing up here is, and this is very common of the visuals or examples you'll see online, they actually are using um, the URL as a data source where they're pulling data from uh, GitHub basically for Vega and there's a bunch of sample data sets there. And so we'll talk about how to bring in those data so you could reproduce this chart in Power BI. Um, there's also this step here where it's saying, hey, the, it must be the dates coming in as a text and it's saying, hey, it's telling it to treat it as a date. There's some size stuff. And then basically there's, there's three layers. So there's this layer and then the square brackets means an array, which means you're gonna find one or more um, specs uh, in, in between there. And separated by these these curly brackets here. So the first one is this is the one that's giving you the the mouse over interaction. And basically, what it's doing is you know usually when you see params here, it's 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 grabbing some sort of an input and, and storing it to you somewhere else in the visual. And so it's giving it a default value. So before you even move the mouse, it just gives it a place to start. So January of 2005. But then it's using a select uh, here to, and a type of point. And it's only uh, capturing the X value. And it's using this thing, uh, a Vega event uh, called mouse over. So basically, wherever the mouse is, store whatever that X value is. And it has this nice functionality where it'll have the nearest of true. So if you're not exactly on a point, um, it'll grab the nearest value, which makes it much more uh, usable. All right. And then it's got uh, this here where it's encoding a point, but it's actually setting the uh, opacity to zero. So this is really just here just to harvest the X value, and it's not really displayed in the visual. Um, so, so then what it does is now that it knows where that X value is, and it stored it in this uh, parameter called index, it uses this other powerful feature called lookup. And this is kind of like a lookup value. Um, and what this whole part is doing here, this transform is, is kind of like a calculate. It, it's even called that. But it's basically doing, um, you know, changing the evaluation context and doing a more advanced calculation. You know, these, the three columns in this are the ticker symbol, the date, and the price for that day. And the visual was showing relative change. And so, you know, how is that happening? Well, that's right here. And so what it's basically doing is, is it's, it's putting in some divide by zero kind of protections here where it's checking to make sure that there's actually a value there. Um, and then it's doing this calculation. But, but in the calculation, it's saying, you know, take whatever the, the current price where I am now, but subtract the price at whatever the index value is. And so this is based on our mouse over um, and then divide by that 
price. And so this is how we get a relative calculation. Uh, and it hap if there happens to not be a, a value there, then it's going to return zero just to, again, protect by, you know, divide by zero kind of stuff. And it's naming that new uh, value as index price. And so this is what's used downstream in, in the visual. Okay, um, and so from this calculated value, it's doing the. This is the sort of the guts of the visual where it's doing the line chart there, where it's x on uh, x is the dates, y is this calculated index price, formatting it as a percent, um, and coloring it by the ticker symbol. And then the last part is for the red line, and so first thing it does is it filters the data down to just where the index is, because otherwise you would get red lines at every exposition. So this is filtering it down just to where the mouse is. Um, it's, again, using the, the X on, on the date. Um, it's making fire brick is the color there, making it, making it red. Um, and then these are just things that uh, uh, have to do with the rule there. And so uh, this is the width of the rule. Uh, and then it's also layering on the red text at the bottom that goes on below the visual right right here um, and the really neat thing about this is it's not actually encoding it based on the the y position so the x is is based off of the the date um, but the y position is based off pixels so instead of using a value from your visual you can actually just tell it where to do it and since the um, visual has this height of 300 they're saying hey put it at 310 Right, and so that way they're just fixing it to always be just below the visual. So I thought that was uh, really cool that you can um, encode stuff by pixel, not just by uh, data value. And so that can come in handy for other things when you want to say maybe put text somewhere on the visual or something. You can just set the X and Y encoding in pixels in terms instead of trying to provide it the the, the data you need. All right, so let's go back to Power BI. And so the first thing I want to show you is how to bring in the data so that you could reproduce this chart there. So this is obviously not a full URL, it's just the end of the URL, so, so what's the rest of it? So I looked around and, and figured it out online, and so if I go into uh, transform data, I'll, I'll show you what it is. And I think there's actually several mirrors out there with these sample data sets, but I believe the main one uh, is this one. And again, I'll put this PBIX in the, uh, description below a link to it on Google Drive so that you can get it but basically you know here's the front part of the of the URL and so there's a bunch of data sets there and so you could go and explore there but a lot of the sample visuals use one of the sample data sets and so you could reproduce that so I just went in and do a web connector with a CSV dot document um, brought it in promoted headers and change type and then I've, I've got the sample data set okay uh, again, that's not required for this, uh, but but it is useful. Uh, all right. And so the, the next thing I want to show is now that I've got the sample data there, which, again, we'll pretend that's our, our real data, and we want to make a visual from it, you know, you could still get inspiration from another visual, but still, but then try to use one of the native visuals in Power BI. And again, you can do a ton with what's just available natively. And so this is just a quick attempt on trying to re reproduce that functionality uh, with, the, the, with the native visuals. And so I just used a, um, a line chart and uh, with an X constant value for whatever the slicer set to. But there was a couple extra tricks I had to do to even get it this far. And, and this has this kind of functionality where I can change the slicer and I have a measure that's uh, calculating the relative change, right? So, and if I just show you that measure, um, it's not terribly complex, right? But it's, you know, and, and I also had to create this disconnected, um, just to avoid issues with auto exist, I had to create this disconnected date table with the dates to be used as the slicer so that I could use it just to uh, harvest the date value, the X value, um, without filtering the data. And so, so this you know grabs whatever the value is from the slicer. I kind of had to do a hack there because it's a between slicer, and I just needed to get the min value, so one of the values there. Um, and then basically, I'm going you know from wherever I am in the exposition, go back and figure out what the price was for this ticker um, at the selected date. Um, you know what's the value for the the current date for that symbol and then just doing a divide here to get the relative percent change and then displaying that 
as a percentage, right? So again, not not terribly complex. Um, oops, and you can do, um, you know, it's it's a pretty nice visual, and certainly more work could be done to make this look much nicer than I have here. This is just uh, pretty basic, um, but some pretty good functionality. And if if Deneb didn't exist, you know, you could you could impress uh, people with this kind of a report for sure. Um, and it's also got really nice uh, tooltips. Uh, and I like this about this one, that it shows you all the values in one shot versus uh, one at a time, which you'll see in a second. Um, all right. So so let's go and, and reproduce the Deneb visual. And so that one's shown here. And so again, we get this nice kind of functionality. Um, there's no separate slicer. It's just totally responding to wherever the mouse is. It's doing this calculation dynamically um, inside the visual. There, there's no other uh, separate measure needed for this. Um, and it's and it's pretty slick. Um, and so what I did here is, you know, I basically copied the code here, and I'll go into the visual. Um, and you can also note if I open the visualizations panel here that I've brought in. Um, you know, I'm not getting the data from the URL. You you can't do that from inside Power BI. It won't let you go grab data from a URL uh, appropriately. And so this, I just put in the, the symbol, the date, and the price uh, into, into this visual. And so then all I had to do basically is, you know, leave this top line uh, the same and then, you know, basically copy the rest of the stuff from, from the website and paste it in here. So all, all that stuff is the same. And all I did was change, I think, the, the height of the visual to, to 420 instead of 300 something. And then I changed the position of the, the label here to to 410, and I think that's that's all I did for for this version. But here here it is working inside Power BI, pr pretty nice uh, functionality. And you know one thing you might say is well you know th this is a little too responsive, right? The mouse over is a little much. I'd like to my users to be able to maybe select a value um, and then study a little more, maybe maybe with tooltips. Um, so so I went ahead and made some changes. All right. And so now here's the same visual, but now instead of the mouse over, I have it on mouse click. Okay, and it turns out there's another property, another uh, Vega event that it'll capture. So not just mouse over, but there's one called mouse down. So basically wherever you click, there's also one for mouse up and there's other events as well that you can explore. Um, and I also kept that nearest setting to true so that if I don't click exactly in the right spot, um, it'll, it'll grab the nearest one, which is a nice user experience. Um, and it also, I was able to add tooltips, and it's a little, it's a little finicky. Um, I don't get all of them in one shot, and you kind of got to get the mice, the mouse right on the the point. Um, maybe there's a setting there for nearest. Um, if if you again, if you know anything to make this even better, please put it in the comments below. Um, but it, but again, you can get there and you can see the see the tooltips there. Um, and I was able to specify. In this case, it's showing all three, but you can also specify only if you only want certain tool tips to show right so let's go into the into the visual here and i'll just show you where i change those things all right so in this case i changed it to mouse down instead of mouse over uh, and i kept nearest equal to true all right and then uh, down below in the um, for on the tool tip for the actual line uh this where i added the tool tip um, and in the tooltip, you can just put true here and it'll show all, you, all the fields, or you can provide an array of these uh, objects here where you can say, you know, I want the symbol, the, the symbol to show, I want the date to show, and I want the index price to show. And in this case, I added some formatting so that it only showed out to one decimal place um, and displayed it as a percent. Okay. Um, so, so again, I was able to, um, it would have been really hard for me. I'm not sure I could have built this uh, chart from scratch and have all that advanced functionality, but it was pretty easy to, to modify it. And so now let's say, hey, I really like this functionality. and I want to make a different chart with similar functionality, but with different data. Uh, and so that's, that's pretty easy to do as well. And so, so here's a chart where, again, I've just got some dummy data. It's not very interesting where I've got, you know, products and sales and I've, you know, narrowed the date range down here, uh, but you can do that. And so let me, I'm just going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete this visual and I'm going to go back to the previous page and copy this one. Okay. 
Um, and then, you know, Daniel has added some really nice functionality here where you can map, map the fields. And if you go in here to uh, this edit specification field mapping area, right, I can, I can go here and then instead of these three fields, I could say, no, I want my product field. Um, I have something on my date, which I have end of month. So which gives, it's the end of the month for all of the values for uh, in that month. Uh, and then let's do total sales. And so those are there in my field well here. And so the symbol, I want product, the date, I want end of measure, and then this, I want total sales. And then I can apply the mapping um, and I get my visual, right? And it's great. And one thing you may notice, and this is, I guess, a little watch out here. It still, it still works, but I've got these warning signs here. And in this case, and this probably won't happen to you, and, and if I look for where I see the yellow symbol, you know, it's probably telling me this is where it's having an issue. And it turns out that the name date is used both for the field name uh, in the one I found online, and it's also used um, when setting that initial value for the index parameter. And so when it updated the field mapping, it replaced, I looked like every instance where it found the word date and uh, it shouldn't have replaced that one. So in this case, and again, this probably won't happen to you. Um, you can just fix it there. And now, you know, EOM is used appropriately in other places like right here, my end of month. Um, and I fixed it uh, where that was the case. Um, but again, my, my chart's working. So again, hopefully this video was helpful to you. Please go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more like this. Um, but hopefully, again, this, this visual and the community of people sharing uh, the Vega Light specs uh, as templates um, is uh, really going to help raise everybody's game in, in the visualization space in Power BI. Thanks.